Hello! Oh, it's weird, I haven't spoken English in front of a camera in a while, but there is a reason that I am speaking to you in English today rather than in Esperanto, and that's because I want to talk about Esperanto. Today is the 15th of December, which is important for two reasons. One, my brother's birthday, he is 12 today, um, and secondly, it is Zamenhof Day, which is the anniversary of the birthday of um, Ludwig Zamenhof, who is the creator of Esperanto. Um, those of you who know me in real life will know I assume that I um, am learning and have been learning Esperanto and that I speak it as regularly as I can and I, I'm planning to write and make more films in it. I have already made one film in it which you can find on my channel if you haven't already seen it and if you know me and haven't seen it then you're a horrible person. Why have you done this? Um, but the reason that I want to talk about today is because there is a campaign globally that was um, kind of instigated by um, a guy in Australia um, known as Evil Deer who decided that like we've never used Zamenhof Day to talk about Esperanto. We always kind of close ourselves off as an Esperanto community from other people on that day, which makes no sense. So this year, we would like to talk a little bit about the language itself and why we love it. So first off, it's probably more important to start with what Esperanto is. Esperanto is a constructed language in origin, um, which does cause a bit of confusion in the community at the moment, because people seem to think that because it's a constructed language, they can make changes to it, and that's not how it works. It's constructed in origin, but now is very much a living language like any other language. The only difference is we have a different history. Um, it was created in 1887 by Ludwig Zamenhof because he thought that if everyone had a, an auxiliary language in common, that it would be the end of essentially racism and wars and so on. That's a very idealistic view, and it probably isn't going to be achieved simply through the addition of an auxiliary language. However, um, I think it's a, a, an ideal that I'm happy to strive for, and it's one that I do kind of believe in. I think if we can understand each other as a human race rather than as, than as different nationalities, then there is hope for us yet. Who knows? Um, but yeah, so he created it in 1887, and it has basically taken off since then. There's now roughly, I think, last estimates were somewhere around 2 million people who speak it, including 100,000 um, native speakers, which for a constructed language that's only 128 years old is incredibly impressive. Um, so, more personally, when did I hear about it? No idea. I think as an English person, um, the first exposure I had to Esperanto was probably in the um, TV series Red Dwarf, where the character of Rimmer is, um, like, it's, it's an ongoing joke for the first couple of seasons that he's trying to learn it and can't, even though it's one of the easiest languages to learn. Um, so I think that was probably my first exposure to it, but I know that I didn't really look into it after that. I think I looked briefly into it and I was like, oh, okay, so Esperanto is a real thing, that's cool, and then forgot about it. But um, when I started coding, um, I, I was teaching myself to um, computer program, and I started with Java, and the book that I was using, everyone who does programming knows the first program you learn how to do is the Hello World program. Well, I had never done any coding before, and the first program that we were shown was Saluto Mondo which is Hello World, but in Esperanto. And there was a little, like, box in the book that said, you know, this is Esperanto, Esperanto is this, like, just a, it was a really basic, this is what it is and we're being quirky because we're not doing the normal Hello World in English. Um, and that, I think, was what initially gave me the idea of, okay, you know what, I think I will look into this. And the reason why I stuck to it, though, and the reason why I actually think that a lot of people might want to consider learning it is the experiences that I've had since learning it. I have spoken to people from so many different countries. I've spoken to people from Brazil, Israel, Bangladesh, Singapore, China, Hong Kong, Australia, Japan, quite a few countries in Africa, America, Canada, um, Germany, France, Poland, Sweden, Norway, like so many different places. And we've all come to the table of like those interactions as equals. I'm not learning their native languages, they aren't trying to learn my native language, we are coming together as equals learning an auxiliary language, one that neither of us has any ownership of more than the other. And that's meant that there's been this, it's been very easy to exchange this understanding of culture that I've been able to learn how different people think and how different people live in a way that I don't think I could learn if they had been speaking English or if I had been speaking their language. For a start, I would never have been able to speak to that many people from that many countries because I can't learn that many languages. That's a fact. I'm awful with languages, usually. Um, and if they were speaking English, it, there, were, there, were, there would be things that they would find difficult to get across using English because English isn't their native tongue, but it is mine. So I would take things, I would hear things in ways that they didn't intend it and so on. Whereas with Esperanto, we came to it as equals, and we were able to have that sharing of culture in a way that didn't pollute either side by being 
by one side being at an advantage over the other. So there's that. There's the fact that I have spoken to that many people from that many countries that I wouldn't be able to do if I was just learning languages off my own back. Because there are a lot of languages in those countries that I just listed, and I can't learn them all. Esperanto has given me access to all of those cultures just through one language. And now, like, the reason why I, I've stuck to it is because I love that experience. I love being able to just pick up my phone and message. Like, there's a guy called Alex that I've been speaking to recently in Germany. There's Chuck Smith, who is also in Germany. Um, who I've been talking to about a couple of projects that I want to be doing. There's um, Evil Deer in Australia, there's I've got a few friends in um, Brazil at the moment that I talk to. Like, I wouldn't be able to do that. And I love that experience. I really love that experience of knowing that, to be fair, pretty much any time of day or night there will be someone that I can speak to and they'll be from a different part of the world and a different life and a different experience and I can learn something. But the main reason that I think that I'm sticking to learning it is that if I ever one day have kids, I want to be able to give them that experience. I want them to have the whole world at their fingertips, that they can speak to so many different people and learn so many different things and come to appreciate so much more than what they would if I've raised them just as English. And I think that's the main important thing for me. However, I know that there are a lot of people who are watching this, hopefully through my, um, face, uh, through my Facebook, that are creative people. I have a lot of creative friends, filmmakers, writers, singers, blah blah blah. There is one very good reason why you should seriously consider learning Esperanto. And that is because there are two million speakers, roughly, across the world. And they are crying out for material. There are, there are a handful of people making films, there are a handful of writers, there are a handful of creative people, and there is not enough to sustain the culture. You want a captive audience? There is one out there. Like, um, Evil Deer said it in one of his videos that being an, uh, he's an actor um, in the English-speaking world in Australia, um, and being an actor in the English-speaking world, it is going to be incredibly difficult for him to have an audience that recognises him and is interested in him and what he has to say. In Esperanto, he's had that within months. Within months of starting, his name is known across the world through Esperanto. And I've started to notice that, that my final year film, Kuru, regrettably, considering I think it is an awful film, and I wish I could do so many things about it differently, but that's how I am. Um, there are a lot of people that will reference it in conversations. There was a group conversation th um, through the app Telegram with a load of Esperantists, and someone used it as, as like the punchline of a joke. And I just sat there and went, that's my film. That's something I made being used by, I think the guy was from um, Portugal. And I was like, that's a guy from Portugal who I've never met using my work to a group of other people who not only have also seen it because they understand the joke, but like that's that was really important to me that like so many people who had also never met each other that my work something I had done had touched that many different people's lives in a way that it became relevant to them. Granted, it was the butt of a joke, but that's besides the point for me. That was like that I've made a difference right there. Like something I've done is known, and if there's if there if like that's a good enough reason to learn if anything else. I've rambled on for a while now, so I'm going to stop. However, if you are interested in learning Esperanto, I'm going to put a link to um, a couple of different places in the video description. I'll also put a link to Evil Deer's channel because I think it's definitely worth a watch because he is really passionate about the language and if it wasn't for him, this whole campaign wouldn't be happening today. Um, I will put a link to my film Kuru just because why not? Free advertising. <laughs> And, you know, if you do have any questions, then by all means, um, my Twitter, my Facebook, or my YouTube channel are all um, linked in the description. Leave a comment on this video if you have anything, or if you know me, then obviously message me personally, and I will do what I can. I genuinely think it's something that everyone should consider. So, thank you for far too much of your time, and I won't bother you anymore.